we will continue our discussion on IC engine and today we will discuss about uh, CI engine injection system and then we will discuss about the uh, cooling of the engines rather uh, how we can reduce the temperature of the engine cylinder that is very important part and probably I have discussed this cooling uh, uh, whether it is air cooled or water cooled. Uh, I'll, you know uh, one, in one of my lectures we have dis I have discussed these issues. So, uh, today I will start my discussion with CI engine injection system then we will discuss about the uh, engine cooling. Uh, we have discussed about the uh, injection of a SI engine. We have seen that uh, in a spark ignition engine normally air and fuel is uh, introduced through a carburetor. But uh, in a carbureted system, we have identified the problems and of course, if we have a modern carburetor, then we can uh, remove rather eliminates those problem. Still, it would be better we have seen that from my last lecture that if we have an, if we have an injection system and then it is uh, we can um, it is better for the engine and we can supply the you know stoichiometric air fuel rich mixture that is the chemically correct air fuel mixture depending upon the requirement of the load. So, that is uh, the SI engine injection system and we have discussed about that uh, mechanical uh, mechanically operated injector and then also we have discussed about electronically controlled unit ECU and we have given a you know uh, level diagram and how how uh, ECU control the amount of fuel or amount of air normally amount of fuel to be pumped through the fuel through the fuel sum to the engine depending upon the uh, requirement of engine that 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 is that is you know uh, sensed to the uh, that is sensed by the uh, ECU unit through the pressure temperature in the intake manifold as well as exhaust manifold and also the temperature of the cooling water jacket. So, today we will discuss about CI engine injection system and we have seen rather we have discussed that uh, in a compression ignition engine we do not have any uh, carburetor I mean uh, what the, what is there in a SI engine. But in a CI engine we have fuel nozzle rather fuel injection system through which we supply fuel into the cylinder during the end of the compression stroke. So, this is the this is an important difference between SI and CI engine. In a CI engine uh, uh, we uh, supply air through intake manifold during intake stroke then at the end of the compression stroke whenever temperature and pressure of the air is relatively high that time we inject fuel through fuel injector in a form of in a in, in the form of a spray. So, uh, now fuel will uh, self ignite at that you know temperature uh, and pressure of the uh, compressed air and and that is why I do not require external agent like spark plug for the initiation of combustion. So, today we will discuss about fuel injection in SI engine sorry fuel injection in CI engine. Fuel injection we will discuss fuel injection in CI engine. So, we will now discuss about that we have a fuel pump of course, we have to have one fuel pump then there will be a strainer of course, and then we will have a fuel pump. So, then we have then we will have another uh, strainer then we have another pump then ultimately fuel is coming to supply this is top dead center then we have piston and 
and then this piston is having motion. Now, this fuel is supplied into the nozzle, then fuel is, fuel is spread into the cylinder. Now, if I try to draw uh, the you know uh, this you know different stroke, then perhaps So, this is TDC and here this is the point where injection ends, injection ends and here injection starts. So, you know this angle is 10 to 20 degree and total angle is near about 50 degree. This is almost 50 degree and this is 10 to 20 degree. So, injection starts when slide piston is slightly away from TDC that is uh, we have discussed there is a first phase of conversion. So, that means the amount of fuel being injected into the cylinder during the first phase of conversion they will complete the conversion and piston is at TDC and then the remaining part of the combustion com will be completed. So, injection injection start the fuel injection start when piston is 10 to 20 degree below TDC and it continues till uh, the total angle of injection or total angle of uh, you know fuel spray is around 50 degree. So, uh, this is the you know uh, so this entire period is known as injection period. So, this period is known as injection period. So, time required uh, to travel piston from this location to that location I mean from location A to location B uh, is the injection period. So, this is fuel tank this is these are strainer or filter because when we are this is low pressure pump low pressure pump and we have another another filter before fuel enters into the high pressure pump. So, this is high pressure pump and then then fuel goes into the nozzle and then it is spread. So, that means, uh, this is the fuel injection system we have we need to have pumps which will take what which will you know pump fuel from fuel tank into the nozzle because we have seen that there is a huge pressure drop across the nozzle because nozzle we need to uh, we need to increase the velocity so that we can have it is a, it is a diverging converging shape. So, while fluid in fuel is flowing through the nozzle there is a huge pressure drop and at the cost of that we are having gain in velocity kinetic energy. So, what do you mean by fuel injection system? So, this is I can write fuel injection system a uh, means of metering fuel into the cylinder at the proper time. So, what do we mean by fuel injection system? So, that means fuel injection system what do we mean by that? So, this is a uh, mean means for injecting fuel into the cylinder into the cylinder at the at 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 the proper time at the proper time in a in the cycle is a necessary component for the operation of CI engine is a necessary component for the operation of CI engine.
since the injection system is called upon to start and control the combustion process. So, fuel injection system is a means which is used to inject fuel into the cylinder at a proper time and this is a necessary component for the operation of a CI engine for the for a CI engine. So, that means the injection system is called upon to start and control the combustion process. This injection system is called upon to start and control the combustion process. That means, since we are not supplying fuel mixed with the air during intake stroke, we need to supply required amount of fuel at a proper time essentially to have a proper combustion and that is why you need a system through which we can meter. So, we will now write, we will now discuss about that what are the objective of having this system and then to accomplish the objective, uh, what they are, they are we need a few functional you know uh, elements. So, we need to, now we should know that fuel injection system we re require only to supply fuel at a proper time which is a necessary component for the combustion of the CI engine. And if you would like to supply fuel at a proper time, not only fuel that are required amount of fuel at a proper time, then what should be the, what are, what will be the components for this fuel injection system, rather what will be the functional elements and before that we need to know what are the objectives of having this fuel injection systems. So, now we will discuss about the objectives. So, objectives of the fuel injection system. Objective of fuel injection system, right. So, the injection system of CI engine should fulfill the following, I mean I can write the injection system of CI engine should fulfill the following objectives. Uh, consistently and precisely, consistently and precisely, right. Number one is meter the quantity, meter the quantity of fuel demanded by the speed and load of the engine, this is very important. Meter the quantity of fuel demanded by the spin speed and load of engine number 2 distribute so first objective is that fuel injection system will have an element which will meter the required quantity of fuel depending upon the varying load and speed of the engine so not only this once we meter the quantity of fuel or required quantity of fuel, then we should have another element which will be able to you know distribute the metered fuel into the or rather into the nozzle or among the cylinder. So, number 2 is distribute the metered fuel among the cylinders. That means, if we, we normally we will have multi cylinder engines. So, that means, if you have multi cylinder engine, then we need to ensure that each and every cylinder will get required amount of fuel at a proper time. So, whenever we will have a fuel injection system, that, that means, we need to ensure that the metered fuel should be distributed among the uh, engine cylinder. Number 3, also very important, uh, we have distributed the metered fuel among the cylinder then distribution is not only the, the distribution is not the final task then we have to inject the fuel at the correct instant in the cylinder so there would be another elements which will be able to inject the fuel uh, inject the fuel at the correct instant 
at the correct instant in the cylinder. Number 4. So, distributed fuel we have distributed among the cylinder then we have to inject the fuel at a correct instant of time not only that we have to inject the fuel at correct rate inject the fuel at 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 the correct rate at the correct rate so correct instant as well as the correct rate and again i am telling that we have discussed this aspect as well whenever you are supplying fuel through fuel nozzle into the cylinder we need to ensure the desired spray pattern with a fine you know a desired a finer spray pattern with a desired cone angle that means we have to ensure that the spray should be, uh, the nozzle will be able to spray the fuel in such a way that there will be a even distribution as well as there should be fuel at the remote corner so if you have a you know when your piston is having cylindrical shape that means Ent over the periphery of the piston phase either almost the entire combustion phase will get the fuel essentially to have a smooth and efficient combustion. That means, we have to have inject the fuel another metering element which will be able to inject the fuel with the spray pattern and atomization demanded by the engine of the combustion chamber. Inject the fuel with the spray pattern. with the spray pattern and atomization demanded by the engine of the combustion chamber. right number 6 begin and end the full injection without disturbing after or uh, without you know uh, uh, sharply i mean without having any trouble that means begin and end of the injection sharply that is without you know after the injection without having after injection we will we will we'll discuss what do we mean by after injection that means these six are the important objectives we should have we should consider while designing an injection system or fuel injection system for CI engine. So, uh, we have discussed now to accomplish this objective to accomplish this objectives a number of functional elements are required right. So, therefore, I can write now therefore, to fulfill the objectives a few number of functional elements are required right so number 1 what what is the number objective meter the quantity of fuel right meter the quantity of fuel demanded by the load and speed of the engine that means we have a pumping element to move the fuel from fuel tank to the cylinder. So, if we now compare one objective with one uh, you know uh, requirement uh, you know functional element then first objective was to meter the quantity of fuel as demanded by the load and spe speed of the engine. Therefore, we required one pumping element pumping element to move the fuel. from the tank to the cylinder. 
number 2 then objective was distribute the metered fuel among the cylinder that means there should be metering element to measure and supply the fuel at the rate demanded by the speed and engine so there will be another element which is what is known as which is known as metering element metering element to measure and supply the fuel at the rate demanded by this demanded by the speed and load. So, number 3 we have measured and supplied the fuel according to the load and speed of the engine. Not only that we should have metering control to adjust the rate of metering element for the change in load and speed. Speed. So, not only that because I am telling that was the problem in a with a carburetor system. So, once we design a carburetor then we cannot you know take care of the you know altitude and height. So, once we design the carburetor that carburetor will be able to supply a required amount of fuel and uh, air fuel mixture. Uh, that that carburetor system cannot be adjusted to supply you know required amount which is demanded by the engine may be uh, at a different load and different speed. So, now since we are going to have a metering fuel injection system that injection system should be flexible enough that means, it should meter uh, the uh, we should have a controlling unit that means, metering element then we have a metering control. metering controls to adjust the rate of metering elements for changes in load and speed of the engine for changes in load speed of the engine. Number 4, the you should have distribution distributing elements to divide the metered fuel equally among the cylinder. Number 5, there should be a timing control to adjust the start and stop of injection. So, we should have another element integrated with that injection system that is timing element, timing controls to adjust the start and stop of injection and finally, we should have one mixing element to atomize and distribute fuel within the combustion chamber. So, these are the functional elements required which we need in an injection system to fulfill the objectives of a fuel, fuel injection system. So, now we have seen that what are the objectives of having a fuel injection system. Initially, we have seen the what is fuel injection system. It is a means of injecting fuel into the cylinder at a proper time and also at a proper rate uh, which is required upon de depending upon the load and speed of the engine. Now, we have understood that the objectives of having metering system and if we can recall the problems 
of uh, a carbureted system then perhaps we can differentiate that ok fine what will be the objectives of, of a injection system and then to fulfill that objectives we need a few functional element and we have uh, understood that those functional elements are essential uh, to, to, to satisfy or to fulfill the uh, you know uh, objectives. Now, uh, this SI CI engine injection system can be classified into two categories. So, types of types of injection system. This is classified into two category. First one is uh, air injection system and number two is solid injection system. This is further classified into three different categories. First one is you know common rail system individual pump and injection individual pump and nozzle system And last one is unit injectors. In this solid injection system, here we have pump to compress the. We have to pump. Uh, we have we have pump to compress the liquid fuels to compress the liquid fuels. So, uh, now I will discuss uh, these two injection systems one by one. So, it is a first one is air injection system we will now see uh, what is air injection system and then the, we have a solid injection system and this is again classified into three sub categories common rail system, individual pump and injection uh, nozzle system and we have unit injectors. In all these cases we have pump to compress the liquid fuels. So, if we now go to discuss about air injection system. So, now I will discuss about the air injection system. Schematically I will discuss so, so we suppose this is a engine cylinder. this is top dead center we need to supply fuel over here and then we have one air compressor and then this compressed air is taken over here so this is air compressor so, this is air injection system Dr. Rudolf Diesel who first introduced this air injection as the means of atomizing, atomizing and distributing the fuel throughout the combustion chamber. So, Dr. Rudolf Diesel uh, introduced this air injection system. air injection system as the means for atomizing and distributing the fuel for atomizing and distributing the fuel uh, throughout the combustion chamber. rather into the combustion chamber. So, 
So, Dr. Rudolf Diesel who first introduced this air injection system as a means for atomizing and distributing the fuel into the combustion chamber by how? This is a mechanically actuated valve. So, uh, here fuel was metered and pumped to the nozzle. So, this is a nozzle. So, maybe this is nozzle and fuel is coming. So, here fuel, fuel is you know fuel is metered and pumped uh, to the nozzle. So, we have a one metering element which will meter the fuel and then pump to the fuel up to the nozzle right. A mechanically actuated valve which was also connected to a source for high pressure air when the nozzle was open then a mechanically actuated valve a mechanically actuated valve which was also connected to a source of high pressure air which is also connected uh, uh, to a source for high connected to a source for high pressure air. So, we have to have a source of high pressure air through compressor right. So, when the nozzle was opened the air would sweep the fuel into the engines and deliver a well atomized spray even though heavy viscous fuels are being injected. So, the idea is even we supply a heavy and uh, sorry a high viscous very high viscous fuel if I pump high viscous fuel up to the nozzle maybe we can use a compressed air high pressure compressed air at the nozzle and then the compressed air will try to sweep you know the you know uh, the fuel into the uh, engine and deliver a you know well atomized spray. So, that means we need not to have a very precise nozzle we need not to be a very high pressure pump, but only uh, that is the first introduced uh, this was the this is the first injection system introduced by Rudolf Diesel uh, as a means for atomizing and distributing the fuel. So, we will supply fuel up to the nozzle and if we can supply fuel with a high uh, uh, heavy fuel with a high viscous uh, with a high viscosity even then uh, if we have a high even if, uh, if it is connected with a you know line of high compressed air then the compressed air will try to sweep the liquid uh, into the cylinder with a very finer atomized uh, in a well atomized uh, spray uh, and in a better distribution will be obtained. So, that means I am writing that when the nozzle was opened. So, when the nozzle so fuel is metered and pumped to the nozzle then a mechanically actuated valve which is also connected to the source of high pressure air and that will be also going to the fuel no, nozzle. So, when nozzle is opened the air would sweep the fuel the air would sweep the fuel into the engine and delivered a oil atomized spray even though heavy even though uh, heavy uh, viscous fuel uh, fuel uh, is being being introduced or being injected. So, this is the total overall overall injection system we will have a metering element and then pump which is used to meter and pump the liquid up to the fuel up to the nozzle and then there will be a mechanically actuated valve which is also connected to a source of the high pressure air. Now, when you are supplying nozzle into a cylinder that fuel line will be connected with the high pressure air and then when nozzle is open that air would sweep the fuel into the engine and deliver a oil atomic spray even though 
a heavy and viscous being in, in, injected. But what, the, what is the prob problem? The size and cost of the air compressor along with the power required for its operation has made the air injection system obsolete. So, this is nowadays used. So, I am writing here the size and cost uh, of the air compressor of the air compressor along with its operation along with the power required for its operation or operational cost along with the power required for its operation has made the air injection system obsolete. So, this is very important that means, uh, although we can have a better or well atomized spray pattern, we can handle heavy and high viscous well, still we need a separate compressor and size and cost of course, is very high. Not only that, its operational cost that is the power required to operate it also very cost this all these aspects if we combine together and then perhaps all these uh, issues I mean uh, are important and if we consider all those aspects probably because of that this air injection system is nowadays is not popular rather, rather it is now obsolete. So, this is the air injection system. Now, we will discuss about the you know solid injection system. So, as a solid injection system we have seen that here if we go back if we go back to my previous slides where it is we have a pump to compress the liquid fuel. So, that means, in a air a solid injection system we have it can be subclassified into three categories common rail system, individual pump and nozzle then unit injectors. So, common rail system which is mainly in uh, it is used mainly in Kiroskar Cummins engine. So, uh, I can write that common rail system. So, this is solid injection system and in this subclassified is common rail system. Very important. So, this common rail system is used mainly in Kiloskar Cummins in systems. So, it is very important we will discuss that what is common rail system that uh, we have a fuel reservoir, we have fuel reservoir, then we will have two one pump sorry low pressure pump that is what we have so we have lp pump this is one filter then we have another high pressure pump and that is used to supply fuel in a common rail. So, we have a common rail and then another line is connected if the you know throttle valve to maintain a constant pressure in the common rail. If pressure becomes high then it is again taken back at the inlet to the high pressure pump. So, we have a throttle valve, we have a throttle valve. So, this is throttle valve, throttle valve these valves maintains a constant pressure 
in the common rail. Right. So, this is common rail and then we have metering element and we have metering element may be we can supply uh, there will be metering element. So, all these are the metering element. and then we can two cylinder. So, all these are going to uh, two cylinders. So, that means, this is a common rail system, we have a fuel reservoir, then we a filter, we take in a low pressure pump, then it is used, it is taken again to high pressure pump and before that we have another filter and we are supplying fuel into the common rail. We need to maintain a constant pressure in the common rail and for that if the pressure is somehow become high, it may because maybe because of the malfunction of the nozzle or metering element, then there will be a throttle valve to reduce the to uh, maintain the constant pressure. So, that we can take back certain amount of fuel into the again at the end at the uh, beginning of the high pressure pump at, at the entry of the high pressure pump and from common rail we are supplying fuel into the into different cylinders through metering elements. So, this is normally used in Kiloskar Cummins engine and, and this is the overall uh, you know uh, block diagram through which we can supply uh, fuel into the common system that means there will be again nozzle. So, uh, then we have to discuss that ok fine we are taking element up to metering element then we will have a nozzle and then by how we can uh, you know uh, we can supply that uh, fuel into the um, uh, cylinder. So, before uh, going to cylinder that means we have a nozzle uh, I mean then how this acting. So, uh, I am writing now uh, if we have a cylinder If I take only one cylinder, then So, this is one. So, this is a schematic nozzle. So, we take high pressure supply from the common rail, then uh, it you know it uh, it, it uh, strikes the uh, nozzle uh, you know nozzle face, then this nozzle is connected with a spring you know loaded spring. 
So, this lifter is there one this is called lifter this is lifter. So, the lifter determines when the injection starts and when injection will end and the period of injection. So, the lifter movement so the lifter movement uh, determines when the injection will start stop and the period of injection so this is the overall that means uh, the movement of the lifter controls the amount of because it is used. So, whenever high pressure high, high power high pressure fuel supply from the common rail is striking the nozzle face. So, and it is it 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 if we decompose the force acting on the nozzle, then perhaps you know, and if it is from both the sides, then horizontal component will balance each other, while the normal component will try to lift the spring lift the uh, nozzle with a, uh, through the spring and it will try to create a gap between the you know cylinder and nozzle the no normal tendency of the nozzle is to remain seated at the uh, at, uh, with the cylinder at the you know valve seat. So, whenever there is a net horizontal force not vertical force that vertical force will try to lift the nozzle by through a certain height and the gap between the nozzle and cylinder will try to uh, uh, the gap that is created between the nozzle and the cylinder wall that I mean the, the open opening area through which the fuel will be supplied into the cylinder. So, it, it depends upon the pressure cylinder pressure and the pressure at the nozzle outlet that we will discuss you know uh, in the next class. Also, there might have some return of certain amount of fuel that will that will return into the reservoir through this leak or uh, uh, leak port that is what I have shown here. So, the lifter movement that will control and that will start that 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 determines when the, the injection will start stop as well as the uh, period of injection. So, uh, uh, we have discussed today about the what is fuel injection system and then what are the objectives of having a fuel injection system and we have uh, you know uh, identified and then we also have seen what are the metering a uh, functional element required to fulfill that those objectives. And then we have classified that CI engine, CI engine injection system into two categories air injection system and the solid injection system. Air injection system that was first introduced by Dr. Rudolf Diesel and, and we have seen that we can you know, uh, you know supply fuel in a well mannered spray into the cylinder, uh, but for that we need to have one compressor, but the cost and size of the compressor as well as its operational cost you know has made this system obsolete nowadays. So, it is nowadays almost all the engines are having solid injection system and of solid injection system we need to have a pump to compress the fuel and for that the first sub category is a common rail system which is used mainly in the close car Cummins engine and we have seen that how a common rail system is uh, you know you know functioning and then we also have seen that whenever you are taking fuel high pressure fuel from the common rail into the nozzle and then this is a mechanically operated uh, uh, system and then by how can control the movement of the nozzle so that we can uh, we can supply fuel into a cylinder. With this I stop here today and I will continue my lecture, uh, discuss in the next class. Thank you.